Sometimes <laughs> I lose my mind. Is this a song? Sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> it is know. a song now. That's a pretty good song. Yeah, I um, liked it. Impromptu podcast. Wow. I was sitting here drinking tea with my brother Andrew Morris. And he started saying some deep shit, and so I pulled out this recorder. <laughs> it all recorded. It's so funny we how could like recreate well, the spontaneous situation that I love <laughs> so much. That was just funny. Like uh, when we were talking about it, I didn't feel like it was so deep. Oh no, I thought it was great, man. We're talking about um, <laughs> about how much I've been slacking. That's, that's what I brought up. Motivation. In the past couple weeks, because um, I've been having chiba chews for breakfast. Which, if you don't know what that is, um, good. I'm glad you go to church, but I don't. I eat chiba chews and go to jujitsu practice, and then it just kind of slows down the rest of the day. You know, like it doesn't make anything so productive. And so Andrew gave me the good advice of writing down goals. And so like, well, I don't know. Like I've never been good at writing down goals. I never understood it because I just thought goals seem so lofty. Like I don't know how to um, just make them break, break it down into like a small, reasonable goal. Like what like, though? What do you What do you mean? Like what do you write as goals? Like uh, move you, to Europe. Yeah, <laughs> there's, like, there, there's steps involved with that, right? Like so, look up. Like, I don't know. Just do like research about it. Like housing in Europe and like how reasonable it is to get there, and what you need to get there, right? Because like you're kind of you're not like flowing with money, right? You can't just like yeah, I'm strapped. Yeah, so you, <laughs> you can't just like up and leave tomorrow yeah. if you wanted to. Yeah. So there's steps in order to get there. So right. break it down step by step. Say, hey, I need this much money for a plane ticket. I need this much. And then give yourself like a time frame too. Yeah. Like, okay, I so I feel it. like I um, <laughs> I make myself sound like I don't do any thinking or... I, I guess I do do that because I, I have a goal of for $5,000, I can do one and all of these things. One, for $5,000, you can move to Australia. You need to have a certain amount of the bank account though or else they won't let you in. Which I think is a pretty cool rule that Australia has going right now. Yeah. But then there's something about Australia, man. Like, I don't know what they're doing right in the economy, but, like, um, they're just inviting Americans to come work for more money than Australians make. <laughs> like, my buddy w- was there. He, I think, I don't know if he was a fry cook in Australia, but that's what he did in Canada before. Mm-hmm. So he's doing some sort of kitchen work with Australians, and he's getting paid more than them oh. for, like, something in the kitchen. You know, this, yeah. the, the, there's many of the same jobs. I wonder if I can do that. You can go teach math down in Australia. Yeah. See, these are things we need to look up. Like, this, would be, <laughs> this would be like a thing I want to write down. Just like look up what this policy is, right? Because yeah, yeah, like yeah. I, it sounds like you don't know too much about it. I know a lot about it. Yeah. And so here's a cool <laughs> rule: you can't work the same job more than six months. Yeah. You get a one a one year visa, and you can't have a job more than six months. That's sick. Which is awesome, right? Yeah. Like <laughs> I, I love these little things in life that are like force you to be. Um, uh, like change. out on your own. Yeah. Like that's. I kind of hope I get kicked out of my parents' house. Yeah. I don't think it's very likely. They're very nice, and like maybe they just heard me say that and now just increased the odds. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Like how cool is that? Like I, I used to think about it all the time in Taiwan because I was in. I was doing illegal immigrant work. Mm. Like I didn't have visas or anything. <laughs> Making grilled cheeses. <laughs> Making grilled cheeses for kindergartners. Illegally. Just an illegal activity. <laughs> teaching at kindergarten classes. Which is so strange, man. Like, kindergarten teaching is, like, one of the most abundant teaching positions in Taiwan. Yeah. It's all illegal. You're not allowed to teach like, someone under the age of six. What? But that's, like, so common. What? <laughs> and so I, I kept dreaming, like, what if I just get kicked out of this place, man, my life's going to change in such unforeseen ways. Yeah. Which is what it's the part that gets me all excited about the future is how unforeseen it is. That's why I, I, I think, like, that's why I found my career path that I want to take. And it has that, right? Like being a college lecturer, you don't get tenure. You're not like really kind of important in the college's eyes. You come in and you kind of fill a role. You come in, you teach a class, and then they're like, oh, we don't need you to teach any more classes. So you're like essentially fired, right? It's kind of like, it's kind of like in Australia where you have a time limit and you're just like, hey, get out. (laughs) Like, get the fuck out or we break the law. Yeah. (laughs) Or do something else. Teach kindergartners illegally. Yeah. And I could do that. I then I keep having that number in my brain, 5000 Because you know what I can do for $5,000? I can both live in a Zen center for three months mm-hmm. and then move to Taiwan uh. all for $5,000. Yeah. Or spend three months in India and then move to Taiwan. <laughs> 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 and, like, buy a motorcycle and have a house and, like... Right. It, it's just I have that number in my head, but no um, steps like, to getting there. Yeah. 
Yeah. I mean, it's none that, um, because I have a hard problem with, like, a lot of my thoughts, because I do have, I do think about the future a lot, but I feel like they're very vulnerable thoughts. That's why I have a hard time talking to my dad about it, because anything I bring to him, like, Dad, I'm going to go trim weed in August. That'll give me $5,000. He's like, yeah, you talk to your buddy. This is a for sure thing. This is what you want to do with your life. Whoa. <laughs> no, I mean, I just thought about it. I don't know. Like, <laughs> yeah. it's, it's a thing that, it's a possibility. Yeah. I mean, it's just, I feel like a, a difference of lifestyle. Like, so many other people, like, they take money so seriously, you know? Mm. And they're like, this is a thing I need. Like, if I don't have it, I'm failing as a human, yeah. you know? Which is not, like, a, a an idea that you have. You're like, money is a way to do things. Yeah, because the, the, the thought that I had, I, I can't really say if I had it. Either I thought this or I read it. <laughs> it's hard to tell the difference sometimes. Yeah, but, but I mean... Just, um, th- there's two ways to gain financial security in the future. One way is to just make more money, and the other way is to spend less. Yeah. So ideally, you do both of them. Yeah. Right? Like, that's, like, best case scenario, someone who makes a lot of money and is content with not spending it. Yeah. Very hard to do. Yeah. I've never been able to do that. Anytime <laughs> I have money, my spending is way up. Yeah. Yeah, I talked about that with Boo a little bit. Like, as soon as I got hired for my accounting job, I started just buying stuff. Like, I bought, I spent three hundred dollars on UFC tickets. Yeah. Like, immediately. <laughs> <laughs> I got like all new, all new clothes. Yeah. There, I, I stopped doing that. Um, I guess I bought like one shirt. <laughs> I was like, this is out of control. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I started buying books. Oh, it's crazy. Yeah. It's crazy. I mean, yeah, I feel like I live pretty much trying to save money in like every way possible right like I make all my own food I'm being I I don't know I guess like the other day like I bought new tires that was the only like big purchase I've made in a long time and that's like safety yeah like (laughs) (laughs) you drive every day (laughs) yeah my tires are like the wires were poking out like (laughs) so it's like definitely a thing I needed and like for safety and stuff like that and it, it allowed me to come up here and like see you and my family and everything so it was like definitely like a good investment but like right after I went to Goodwill and found a tabletop shuffleboard <laughs> for like six bucks. And I was like, I'm splurging. Like, this is like the biggest purchase. And it's so much fun. Like, it's so sick. <laughs> that, that's a cool side effect of like not spending much is when you do, I, I, I shouldn't say you, I appreciate my spending much more when I don't do it much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like that, when I bought tea from you. Oh, yeah. It'd be like 100 bucks for tea, right? And it was just like, I was like throwing it around my room, just like, yes! <laughs> I have all of this. I'm yeah. so excited. Because it's so easy. Like, if that tea um, came to me easily, yeah. I'd just like drink it all willy nilly. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, like, drink it a couple times, throw it out. Yeah. Like, that's what I've seen. My, all my friends who are in the tea business, who make their living on tea, or anything like that, they drink tea in a way that's like 13 minutes tops. Really? Yeah. Okay. Oh. I'm gonna wait for the, <laughs> <laughs> the airplane to fly by. <laughs> but yeah, like they, they, they put in the pot, they brew it uh, three times, which then, as you know is like that's when most of the flavor is, around mm, like the third steep. Yeah. And after that, it goes it. downhill. Yeah. But you and I, like, we can drink that for, like, an hour. Yeah. You know? <laughs> like, we will drink it until it's water. Because, like, you know? <laughs> what, what, I, forget, I forget, like, how Wuda phrased it. Wuda is this uh, cult leader in Taiwan that I hung out with a lot. He's a very nice guy. So it says He speaks in catchphrases, <laughs> which I think is a very important thing, like, for, um, like, spiritual guys. And he's very good at it. And I forget what he said, like, like, tea will never quit on you. You quit on the tea. Huh. So the tea's never done. Yeah. You know what I mean? People always ask you that. Like, hey, when you're making tea, like, when is it finished? Yeah. The answer is never. Yeah. Like, Wuda said he drank the same tea for a month, and yeah. at, after a month, it was still not water. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, you take regular water, you put it in, it comes out different. Yeah, it's not water. It's, it doesn't like look it. like tea. Yeah. You wouldn't, like, you wouldn't um, surprise anyone with it. But the point is, man, is, like, uh, if you have an abundance of tea and you don't care for it that much, you can just toss it out. Or you can take the time and appreciate it, drink it for an hour yeah. or longer. Yeah. But, you know, I don't really do that. I, uh, I, that's I, what I, I've I, done. I go for the punch. I've done it with, like... like de- jolted. <laughs> <laughs> that's what I've done with all the tea I bought from you. Like, every time I drink it... Like, I, dr- I drink it at work, too. I guess that's, like, the least I appreciate it. But I still, like, I'll steep it. Like, in a, my work thermos, or my, like, my thermos, right? The, it's pretty big. So one steep kind of takes a lot out of the tea. Yeah. Um, but I'll steep it, like, like eight to ten times. Because in, like, worst-case scenarios, like, even if the tea, 
ran out, which it doesn't. It's, but even if it did, yeah. you're, you're drinking water. Yeah. Which is like, like <laughs> the not best a, like thing for your health. Yeah. So like, as I keep looking at health things, it's like it all comes down to sleep and water. Mm. Like that's everything that I've been looking at. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, well, you could be taking all these vitamins, or you know, just drink water. <laughs> <laughs> sleep a little bit better. <laughs> which I always forget. Like there's people who don't drink water. Yeah. Like, I have this buddy of jiu-jitsu who, every time I see him, he his leg cramps up. And so I thought there was, like, something wrong. Like, he's got water. tumors. Or, I don't yeah. know. Like, my mind just goes crazy. Like, I give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, this is a guy trying his hardest, and he still has these injuries. Yeah. You know, like, an ACL blew out. But no, he just drinks. He even said, like, while in pain, like, man, I just don't fucking drink water. <laughs> it's, it's fixable. Like one of those problems <laughs> that everyone recognizes just doesn't want to solve. Yeah, Which I understand. Right? Like, I didn't like to do it when I was young either. I drank soda all the time. Yeah. That's I the like... only thing I ever wanted. I was like, why would I have anything that's not the most delicious thing that science can create? Yeah. Which See, is, like, sugar water. Like yeah. Soda. I think, yeah, that might have been because, like, when I was growing up, we never really drank water or soda in my household. Like, my, my dad would always make it a point to be like, drink anything else. Because, <laughs> right, like, soda's, like, basically toxic. It's pure poison. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> it's like, they made it a point to just it's water not, none of the health Especially because, like, my mom's side of the family, like, all they drink. Like, they'll wake up, drink a Coke. with a Filipino side. Yeah, they'll drink a Coke with breakfast. Like, that's their thing. Like, you'll go into a Filipino fridge, you'll open it, there'll be, like, 12 two liters. And there'll be six more in, like, a plastic box right next to it. Like, <laughs> yeah, it's just great. It's like, soda. yeah, it's just the, the lifestyle they're in. And... It's weird because, like, when I was in the Philippines, it was a little different. Like, we always drink bottled water. Mm. Like, we made it a point to drink that instead of soda, which was weird. But then they come here on vacation. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah, I guess. Vacation like, is usually the opposite for me. Like, um, I, I remember laughing because, like, I, I, cause you, you, obviously you know this. Maybe someone listening doesn't. I had this girlfriend in college named Remy, and she her parents lived in Oklahoma. And so I'd go visit her parents the first time I met them. And they have, like, a fully stocked bar. It's a very wealthy family. Mm. And so I was just drinking every day. <laughs> so they think that's just me. Like, <laughs> But no, it's like I'm on. Va- I'm in Oklahoma. Like, I don't know what the fuck I'm doing here. Yeah. You have all the alcohol I've ever heard of. <laughs> like, they, they, they have, the ones they have that beer happened. fridges, <laughs> like a stocked beer fridge, and they don't drink. Oh, my God. You know what I mean? Like, I was like, this is a ridiculous opportunity. I'm going to take advantage. But now they think I'm an alcoholic. <laughs> 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 Which just makes me laugh. Like, yeah. how much I can do about that? Like, they have good reason. Like, yeah. I gave them all the reasons. It's funny. Like, like my family, uh, for Christmas, we played this game. It was the most ridiculous game I think I've ever played. But it was, there was a prize, right? It was like a $20 gift card to, like, in and out or something like that. And so everybody's name was in a hat, and you'd pull out a name. And if your name got pulled, you were out of the game, so you couldn't win the prize, right? And then the last person in the bag would still would get the prize, right? But every time your name got pulled out, you had to take a shot. Oh, I see. And your name you could put your name back in, but if you pull it again, you have to take another shot. And there was also like all the little kids names. So, like the little, the little kids, kids taking shots. No, they would just they would pick out someone to take a shot for them, so... It's like the least even game. Yeah, like, <laughs> <laughs> like there's, it's the most ridiculous drinking game I've ever played, like, by far, <laughs> and... Is it like a made-up-on-the-spot thing? Yeah, I think so. I think <laughs> it was, like, I think the, the initial game was, like, pull the names out of the hat, right? And then Which is, someone, even in itself, that's just a roundabout way of, like, you could just pull one name out of the hat and they're the winner. Yeah. Like, make it more suspenseful. <laughs> yeah. You know, the other way. Yeah. See and so it's not. So the funny part was, uh... My cousin's girlfriend was, like, she, like, just came to the party, like, right in the middle of that game, and for some reason, we made her take a shot with everyone else, because she came in uh, kind of late in the game, and so now everyone in my family thinks she's an alcoholic. Like, <laughs> <laughs> Is peer she peer pressured her? Yeah, it was, like, the first time a lot of them met her, and then so they were just like, yeah, so she just walked in and took, like, seven shots, and then we were just like... Yeah, because we forced her. Like, <laughs> like, everyone was very drunk, and they said, you have to do this, or you're not allowed back. <laughs> like, <laughs> Just trying to make good first impressions. <laughs> yeah. Family's not good at that. They, my family's good at loud first impressions. <laughs> good. So I love the Filipinas. Yeah. I was like, she's Filipino, too, so she knows. Good, good, good. 
Yeah. Dude, so before we started, you're talking about um, <laughs> yeah, we got uh, so off topic. Uh, a, problem, <laughs> a problem that you're dealing with in terms of realizing your goals. Oh yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> so it, w w what's that issue? So, I mean, I'm taking the <laughs> GRE, right? The yeah. and specifically like the math subject GRE. Which the is just like into grad school. right, right. So it's like like this, there's the regular SAT and then there's the math subject SAT. So it's like the same thing for grad school, and so it's very important for getting into grad school for what I want to do, which is math. Um, and the test is on the same day as Kaboo, a music festival in Del Mar, <laughs> that my mom got me tickets to for my birthday. Three day festival. Yeah. Really it was funny because, cool. like, my cousin just wanted to go. And she, so she was just like, hey, go with me. And I was like, yeah, I don't know if I want to pay for that. So she got my mom. She, like, coaxed my mom into buying my birthday gift, which is really just an excuse for her to go. So, Solid. <laughs> yeah. So, but I'm stoked. Like, the lineup's great. It's like Jack Johnson, Aerosmith. Um, Jimmy Buffett, who's yeah. a bucket list guy I want to see. Yeah. Ludacris is another bucket list guy I want to <laughs> see. Like, it's like, yeah, it's going to be great. There's going to be great comedy. Like, I went last year with Steve. It was awesome. Uh, but, yeah, so the the math GRE test, or let's go back. The Kaboot Festival is Friday, Saturday, Sunday, right? Mm -hmm. It's three days. The math subject GRE test is only offered three times a year. And realistically... Right, the the first one's only. It's the only good one in order for getting your applications out to people early, mm -hmm. right? Which is pretty important. And so that test is on the Saturday of Kaboo. So I have to go rage at Kaboo on Friday, <laughs> right? Because like guaranteed, that's going to be the day Jimmy Buffett plays for some reason. Just because that's assuming. how. Yeah, like that's. <laughs> it just seems how the, the universe is probably going to work itself out. Uh, so I'll probably see Jimmy Buffett at around midnight, <laughs> and then I have to take this math GRE test, right? Which is like, it's not an easy test. Yeah, it's it's, it's all important. calculus. It's <laughs> some real analysis, some algebra, and so this is basically all the things you took as an undergrad doing math, right? So like, if you did like economics as your undergrad, you would have missed a lot of this. Yeah. Right? So, I don't know any of this stuff. Yeah. So, I failed calculus. <laughs> <laughs> See? And the calculus is like the basics of it, yeah. you know? Like, <laughs> so I'm just going to have to wait. Like, I, I, I went to a bunch of people for advice, right? Like, it's like, what should I do? Should I just sell my Friday ticket? And almost everyone's reaction was just like, mm, it sucks, you know? Like, <laughs> like, it's just a, that's the end of the street. You got to fix something. You got to turn around. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta start over. I don't know what. Get out of the car. You do cartwheels or something. I don't know. But like you can't. You can't do both. And then I called you, and you were just like, "Yeah, just be a legend. Like, <laughs> just do it. Like, just, just, just do it. Do, do both. Yeah. <laughs> I don't. I don't see the problem in being a legend. <laughs> so, oh. Yeah. And it's like the best advice I've gotten. Like, just do cool things. You know. Yeah, it's a funny thing, man. When like a stressful opportunity comes up like that, because like that, that's exactly what it is, right? Like, um, like we talked a lot about um, how for my birthday it was a similar situation. You bought me a ticket to go see Portugal the Man and Cage the Elephant next week in San Diego, uh, which is really soon. I'm very excited <laughs> for it. Yeah, but Morgan, when I had um, Morgan's not going, he's not yeah. going to get a ticket. He's yeah. not going to listen to this either. Yeah, yeah, yeah but <laughs> <laughs> you know. But when I was working in that office doing accounting. Um, I would get stressed. And so there's a weird thing that happens when stress comes on is that the brain looks for things to be stressed about if there's not something right in front of you. You know yeah. what I mean? So like I'm doing a, like a stressful um, project, for example. Yeah. It's going to take a couple hours. I don't really know when it's going to be done. It's kind of a slippery thing. There's a lot of moving parts. As soon as I'm done, that's no longer the object of my stress, but my brain is in stress mode. Yeah. So it looks for things to be stressed about. So for me, it was that concert, the one coming up, the one that's no longer an issue because I got fired from that job. But at the time, Huzzah. I was like, dude, like, I don't know if I can fucking go to this. I was about to call you. Like, the day I got fired, I was going to call you and be like, dude, I can't go, man. I just got, like, it, it wouldn't make any sense. I would have to sit in traffic for, like, three hours after work, and then I, I'd get to work. I don't think I can take time off. Like, Thursday's the most hectic day. But my point is, is that the brain just looks for these things. Right. And so when you talk to people who are... 
um, stress themselves. Yeah, they all have they, nine to they, fives. They just get <laughs> it. They're just like, what? Yeah, 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 is something to worry about? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, I do that. Um, <laughs> yeah, I'm not good at it either, so you should uh, panic. I'm should quite just, versed in panicking. Should just panic. <laughs> 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 Which is like really terrible advice. Yeah. It, it, th- there's always like a workable situation, but something about like being stressed just like puts you in that state of mind where it's like, hmm, there's no options. Yeah. And I know it because I felt it. I felt it so many times, yeah. and I'm gonna keep feeling it. <laughs> it's gonna keep happening. It's not like something I solved. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's funny as a uh, my solution now at this point is right because I'm probably gonna be drinking at Kaboo, right? But you don't have to. But I probably am. Right? <laughs> like, like last time I went to Kaboo, I drank a forty that morning. So I feel like it's just celebratory. <laughs> that I have to drink a 40 every day of Kaboo. No. Also, if anyone out there listening knows how to get a case of 40s, let me know. Call a distributor? Yeah, that's <laughs> probably a good... No, I tried. I looked for, online for a distributor, and everyone was in, like, New Jersey for 40s. Because, for, like, if you, want, like a dis- if you want a pallet of Bud Light, you can buy that, right? Mm-hmm. That's easy to get. But, like, most places don't even have 40s anymore. Smart like, and Final doesn't sell pallet. Forties. <laughs> no, no one orders Loose a pallet 40s. of forties. Yeah, so it's like it's hard to get just a case of forties, right? Because if I got like a case of forties, it would be good for uh, like a weekend, like two weekends, maybe two weekends, right? Like twelve forties. That should be yeah, right? Like kaboo. No, nah, it's probably like a month after that. So yeah, it'll last you a while. Yeah, it's a year yeah. supply for most people. So what I was saying <laughs> is that. If I drink a 40 for Kaboo, what I have to do now in order to practice is start drinking, get hungover, and then do the math. Right? In like, preparation? Right. Like, <laughs> like a state of mind preparation type thing. Right? Because like now I'm looking at this problem as I want a way to solve it. Right? Yeah. Right? Instead of dodge it. Which is what we were trying to... Toughen yourself up. Yeah. Right? So if I can do it hungover now, who's to say I can't do it hungover... The day of the actual test, <laughs> right? It's good logic, right? <laughs> like, I remember uh, Taylor Dry told me the same thing. Taylor Dry, the owner of Mad Monk, um, he's on an earlier episode of this, of this podcast. He um, he goes to China a lot to buy tea, mm-hmm. and the way you do business in China is you get really drunk first. There's no business talk sober. Nice. Like it's like a, a trust thing. Like if you don't drink with them, they don't really trust you. Yeah. And so he's saying it was difficult that. They would get drunk and then go over all these numbers. And he'd be trying to, like, you know, it's half in Chinese, half in English. Yeah. And then he's just trying to do all this, like, arithmetic. Not hard math, but, you know, you're drinking. And yeah. You're caught up in the moment. You're in fucking China going, whoa. Uh, so many fucking Chinese people. I can't do math. <laughs> and then, um, so in, he had the same strategy where every night he would go home, drink three beers, and do math problems. Oh. <laughs> like, yeah, specifically for that... They, he doesn't do the. He's not in China that much. You yeah. know what I mean? But, like, it was worth it in his eyes to build up to it. That's cool. Right? <laughs> <laughs> That's so sick. Right. Yeah, it was I'll a fun, just, funny life. I'll just do that with calculus. Like, it shouldn't be too hard. Yeah. Right. Solid idea. Yeah. Matt, you know um, a weird idea I had recently? Because um, when, when people talk about, like, their lives and their future, I feel like they, they at least speak as if they think they have lots of control. And like over their actions, but what I started thinking about, and this is, I think I learned this in philosophy class, is I look at my life from an outsider perspective as if like I have no control, and I just kind of learn about myself as time goes on. Mm-hmm. Like there's not much I can just suggest changes. Yeah, like going to like, Australia is like <laughs> it's like yeah, you can do that. <laughs> It's like, well, I shouldn't be sleeping until one every day, but it appears <laughs> that's what I do when I'm employed. Interesting. Yeah. <laughs> like, from, like, an anthropological perspective. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, Marshall appears to smoke weed every night. <laughs> Interesting. It's Even like, though he claims that it disrupts his reading habits. <laughs> so it's, yeah. a, it's a funny, like, way to look at your life. Because I, I've, um, you know, a lot of people say, they, they use the phrase, I would never do that. Yeah, That's something people say like I don't do this. I yeah, it gives me weirder when I don't, doing I don't dance. something they're doing. <laughs> like, that's always the weirdest to me. I don't I don't dance. I do not dance. Me, what? the solid fixed thing. I don't. I won't. <laughs> I am not. 
it's, yeah. it's a really like funny thing to say. Even funnier, man, when like people are doing the thing that they say they don't do. Yeah. Like I remember, um, you remember Courtney from USD. Yeah. She she would every time she's studying, she would look at me and go, "I don't do this. This is not me. I <laughs> like then who are you besides the person you are right now? Yeah. Right? Like it's a it's so an true. illogical thing. It's it's an easy thing to poke into. Yeah. And so I like to think of myself as this guy who can overcome all of his habits and like I'm not a slave to anything. Huh. But I am. I'm a slave to my habits. Everyone is. Yeah. A slave to your habits, whether they're good or bad. I've got some bad habits. Everybody does, I assume. Yeah. But they don't like, really talk about them that much. You yeah. Know? You're a slave to not having money. <laughs> <laughs> no, right. like, so it, it appears, based on um, empirical evidence, that I'm not a go-getter who's going to go make extra money more so than he needs. Right. I'm a guy who looks at my surroundings and goes, that's pretty nice. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, what would it's, I do if I had more money? Yeah. Put it in the bank. That's boring. <laughs> so, like, you know, when I got fired, I signed up for Uber right away and just slacked for like a week and a half, didn't even turn on the app. <laughs> and then, then when I keep doing it, dude, my new bad habit is <laughs> I, I, it, it's so, so, so interesting. I never thought I'd do this, but I'm an addict to fucking off and going to movies. Oh, I've seen nice. so many fucking movies lately. Nice. Like, none that. When I talk to people about them, they're like, they talk about, um, I don't know, there's probably a Captain America movie I haven't seen. Yeah, probably. You know, like, like big movies that yeah. people talk about. And I say, no, I go to movies like every week, but I haven't seen any of the ones that you're talking about. Yeah. Like, I, I, went, I saw a movie that was so fucking interesting. It's just called Wiener. <laughs> oh, I saw I saw a poster for it. I wanted to see it. It's really cool. It's yeah. a documentary following Anthony Wiener, yeah. who got really famous because he was like, um, I, I didn't hear about him until Scandal. Like, some background info is he was, like, this badass politician in D.C. I always feel dumb, like, saying where he... In the Congress or the House or the Senate. Yeah, I don't really know the exact He's in the politics. He's in the politics, standing <laughs> in front of people. But he was just screaming at him. Like, he got really famous as, like, this guy who sticks up for what he believes in. And, like, he's standing up there yelling at these old guys, like, How dare you! And he got, like, quite a lot of, like... He's, like, one of the youngest guys there. He's, like, in his 30s yelling yeah. at these old guys. Oh, he looks really young still. I, it's hard to say how old he is. But um, anyway, he got caught in a scandal because he tweeted out a picture of his erect penis, like, through what? his underwear. It was just, like, a shot of his underwear. Clearly didn't mean it for it to go on his Twitter feed. Yeah. It was supposed to be to a girl. Yeah. And he just fucked up and left it there. He just left it? <laughs> like, it was just on his Twitter feed for, like, I don't know how long, but it can be there for a second and someone's going to see it. Yeah. And it goes there for, like, yeah, <laughs> a yeah. while. Yeah. And so the, the documentary is him making his comeback into politics. So he's running for mayor. Uh, and it's really cool that, like, I don't know anything about politics. I didn't know how it ended. <laughs> I felt like, yeah. like if, I, if I knew the story, I would know if he won or not. But yeah. The whole time I had no idea. Yeah, I don't either, so. But then in the midst of the documentary of him running, he makes the same mistake. <laughs> like more pictures come out <laughs> and he can't deny it like there's nothing he can deny but then the most interesting thing is how like it, it, I, I don't know if every mayor candidate is like this but he had a lot of good ideas right? right they show him at home like talking to his like his wife is a really famous politician she's like Hillary Clinton's right hand woman uh. and um so she's like to people into politics his wife is more famous than he is for that reason yeah she's Hillary's right hand woman and uh <laughs> So they're going all the, all these policies, and he's like has such good ideas. But every time he's in public, they're like, "Why are you sending pictures of your dick?" <laughs> <laughs> That's what every question boils down to. Yeah. And there's one part where he has like this chart, and he's going over like some housing reform or something, like some really good idea to help people. Yeah. It sounded good to me anyway. You know, obviously he's a politician, he knows how to sell things. Yeah. And so he's there. He's like, "Does anyone have any on-topic questions?" <laughs> Everyone's silent. It's a room of like thirty reporters. Like I got the recorders ready. Like any, any off-topic questions. How does your wife feel that you're sending pictures of your dick? <laughs> 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 and it's just like this dude has such a hard life because like the whole documentary, he's just going like trying so hard. Because all he knows how to do is be a politician, right? I'm sure he could start a business or something. He's a talented guy. Yeah. And, but his life sucks because yeah, <laughs> no one, one wants to talk about anything else. Yeah. And um, uh, <laughs> at the end of the movie, <laughs> he's like standing in his in his kitchen, just like upset. Like his marriage has been falling apart the whole movie. Yeah. His wife she gets more and more upset. She doesn't have any answers. And then the cameraman's like, 
why did you ask me to film this, man? I was like, I don't know. I don't fucking know. Because <laughs> 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 it's just the perfect documentation of his downfall. Yeah. And they're there the whole time. Mm. <laughs> so that's what I watched. <laughs> saw that movie. That's funny because, like, I feel like now that I know that, there's, like, a guy in Parks and Rec who did something similar. Like, he became mayor of the city at, like, 17 or something like that. And then he, he put all the money into, a, like, a ice, like, I don't know, like, a sports arena. So it had, like, an ice rink and, like, an indoor skiing hill and stuff like that. And then he got run out of town for that. And I'm like, mm, similar to Dick Pick. <laughs> <laughs> Right, like, no one, like, he goes back to the town, everyone just talks about that, instead of, like, he's like, hey, I want to be mayor again. They're like, yeah. what? But you did that one thing. It's yeah, like, oh, like which that. freaks me out. Like, that's a real thing, like, that people will hold grudges for, like, the only thing they know about you. Right, like Bill Clinton. You know Clinton. what I mean? Like, Bill Clinton? Well, <laughs> he's the one that kind of gets away, right? Yeah, I like, guess People still so. talk about him as, like, a good president, like, yeah, and he fucked that girl, but... Yeah. <laughs> Which I don't know Maybe that's just like a, a He's very good Like um, PR skills Or something Yeah um, I don't know I just I enjoy him as a president He's I don't, a funny guy I don't know anything About politics <laughs> I, I enjoy Obama Apparently people hate Obama I think he's cool I see him on He fills out brackets I think that's cool You don't see like A president do that Very much You know Yeah You don't see uh, presidents On uh, Between Two Ferns Either Was he on there <laughs> Yeah <laughs> Yeah See I see like for me, he was the most accessible yeah. in our lifetimes. Like, he's I mean, on podcasts. Yeah, see, so I didn't... He went to Mark Maron's garage did a podcast. Yeah, wasn't he on um, Comedians with Coffee or yeah, yeah, the yeah. one with Jerry Seinfeld? Yeah. They can't leave the White House, though. Oh, really? They just have to drive around like there's like a cul-de-sac thing <laughs> like, behind the gates. <laughs> like just in the streets of the White House. Yeah, <laughs> so they go like to the cafeteria and get coffee. Oh. Um, that's a good point, but I think like when people get upset about the president... My, my take on it is that I don't think the president actually does much. Yeah. And it's just like a lightning rod of, like, hate. Yeah. Like, Which is a weird gonna, thing. Like, no president, at least not in this current system, is going to be liked. Yeah. No, no way. <laughs> like, it doesn't right? seem like that. Like, look at the two options right now. It's Hillary Clinton and Donald Trump. Yeah, I don't like, know. People... I haven't heard a single person say anything good about either one. Yeah, right? Which is, like, what upsets me about it. Like, even, like, their commercials aren't, like, Trump is actually a good guy. He's got these... It, it's always, like... It's, it's always negative. Yeah, it's yeah, always yeah. speaking it's of always negatives. Like that, the hate. Hillary is a cunt. Don't <laughs> vote for her. <laughs> like is, <why? laughs> yeah, and I which was, is that's the only thing that got me behind Bernie Sanders is that people speak well of him. Yeah, which is like what, such like a simple thing. Like you would expect the leader of the free nations. I don't know if we say that the free nation. <laughs> I mean, there's, like a, there's a lot of free countries. Like I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> the leader of like, this, just, the only Japan's free under slavery. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah. the, the only democracy in the world. <laughs> the think, first and only. You think in like two years Japan's gonna open a Google machine and be like, "Whoa, what? <laughs> <laughs> you can do that?" No. <laughs> but you'd think these people have like such strong merits yeah. that. Um, it, people would be like willing to support them instead of just like going out through hate. Yeah, but then that's something that Sam Harris talked about on Joe Rogan's podcast. Which, if you're listening to this, I highly recommend you listen to that one instead. <laughs> He's much smarter than us. <laughs> but he he made the point that like in a perfect or not even a perfect society, but like in a logical one, in like a good system of government, you'd expect each president to be smarter and better than the last one. Yeah, like they have more informed opinions and they're more enlightened and they speak better. And they just keep getting better. I mean, right? I, I they think have better ideas about policies. They're more enlightened, more compassionate. Right. Like, I think, I mean, again, like, I don't know anything about politics, but I think, like, I think we got that with Obama. You know, he, like, he was much more well spoken, obviously. Like, than George just, Bush. <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, <laughs> well, that's, that's just a given, but, like, he was accessible and he had, like, ideas, and I felt like, I don't know, I felt like there were more things coming out of the White Office with Obama than I remember with Bush. You know? What do you call it the White Office? Did I just say that? <laughs> oh, okay. You know, the white man's office <laughs> with Obama. <laughs> 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 Top ten white men. <laughs> nice. Dude, I'm going to pause this real quick and make some more tea okay. and some water.
microphone check one two what is this it's willie nelson with the redneck business <laughs> andrew morris with the improv <laughs> improv comedy coming right here <laughs> dude i guess singing the, comedy I got the best uh compliment today jujitsu i what? was leaving hair nice hair no oh, even what? better what <laughs> that exists <laughs> i was leaving the gym and travis nawaza he's standing outside he's like Hey man, do you teach yoga here? I was like, no, I don't. He's like, oh, you look like you would. Thanks, dude. <laughs> you know what's funny though is that could be an insult to some people. Really? It's like, you calling me a fucking hippie? Like, <laughs> I ain't no faggot doing yoga. Yeah, <laughs> people who think yoga is just gay sex. Which what? is not far off. What? <laughs> <laughs> well, because like I learned that the definition of yoga is moving and breathing. Which is just like, like the most vague thing ever. Yeah, it's like, literally so, life. Like yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> and so that's kind of the point. Like yeah. In India, like, okay, you can do like different types of yoga. You can do your formations. You can do your stretches. But um, you apply it to everything. Mm. And so the yoga of gay sex is uh, <laughs> 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 it's a thing. <laughs> like, what's the difference between yoga and jujitsu? Nothing. Answered for you. Sorry. Oh. Um. <laughs> Didn't even give me a chance. It's I, like my, my I thought favorite, this was um, gonna be multiple choice too, so I was waiting for the next answer. <laughs> so. It was like my favorite Mitch Hedberg joke, where he's like, "I looked at my friend and said, do you like tomatoes?'" <laughs> Ah, uh, that joke's fucking down. I don't know how it's going. <laughs> <laughs> he just bails like, <laughs> like mid joke. Like, like on a CD. <laughs> <laughs> when he's practiced. <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> he he bailed on a joke and then sold it. <laughs> <laughs> I love the the one where he, it was like the end of his set. He's like, "You guys are laughing much more now. I'm gonna start over." <laughs> he tells like the first like three jokes, like the full things. Like, <laughs> yeah. He's one of the few comedians that, like, could pull that off, like, telling jokes people have already heard. Yeah. Like, him, Dice Clay, he could do it. Dice can say the same jokes, like, yeah, like always. Yeah. Those nursery rhymes, man. Yeah. He gets whole stadiums to chant them with him. <laughs> What's in the bowl, bitch? Oh! <laughs> 15,000 people saying that. Who've already seen it, like, yeah. 20 times. like. <laughs> Especially, like, I don't really know, like, how big Dice used to be. But, like, in 91, when he's the biggest comedian on earth. Yeah. Like, I think the equivalent is, like, um... You know Kevin Hart's like selling out arenas. Yeah, he's got a, a thing coming to movie theaters. I know because I go to movie theaters and watch commercials. <laughs> it, it's him in a football arena. Oh damn! Just Kevin Hart. Oh my god! Him in a microphone. That's so scary. A football <laughs> field. I couldn't imagine that. That's so many people. But I think that's like obviously that adds to it another level. But like if you take out inflation, um, <laughs> it's like nice <laughs> inflation of people. Yeah. Like <laughs> inflation of arenas. <laughs> I think that's like the the obviously that's the biggest thing going on in comedy right now is Kevin Hart doing football arenas. Yeah, like, that's ridiculous. I don't think anyone's bigger than that. No, no like, ticket like, sales wise. Yeah, I can't I can't think of anyone. Like, I'm trying to think of like progression of giant comedians. You know, like Russell Peters will sell out like the O2 Arena. Yeah, or the Indian equivalent as well. Yeah, Ooh, I don't know what's going on in India, <laughs> but um. Yeah, like um, I remember it was like it was like Dane Cook for a while was selling out huge places, yeah. and then Daniel Tosh was selling out. Like I saw Daniel Tosh in uh, the Honda Pond. It's not what it's called. The Honda Ponda. The Honda Ponda. There you go. The Honda Center. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, Honda, yeah, the Honda Ponda. And so, yeah, like that was huge, right? That's like, yeah, play full hockey games in there. Mm. High school basketball games. Wow. <laughs> Sold time. at high school basketball games. But yeah, it was like a full thing. He was on for like three hours. It was crazy. Like, I, I couldn't imagine someone made that much material. Like, let alone did it in one set. Like, so, <laughs> so crazy. Yeah. Um, so I, I brought a, a book out uh, in the break ah. for you to read. It's, this is, the book is called The Art of Living. It's um, a woman went back to, and read uh, all these Stoicism documents about a guy named Epictetus. Mm -hmm. The Epictetus is famous because he was the mentor to the one true emperor, Marcus Aurelius, of gladiator fame. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, so Manju, Manju <laughs> selected his favorite quote that I gave him, <laughs> that I chose for him. He said, read this. Um, all right, let's hear it. 
All right. So most of what passes for legitimate entertainment is inferior or foolish and only caters to or exploits people's weaknesses. Avoid being one of the mob who indulges in such pastimes. Your life is too short and you have important things to do. Be discriminating about what images and ideas you permit into your mind. If you yourself don't choose what thoughts and images you expose yourself to, someone else will, and their motives may not be the highest. It is the easiest thing in the world to slide imperceptibility into vulgarity. But there's no need for that to happen if you determine not to waste your time and attention on mindless pap. 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 <laughs> pap. That's how Romans used to talk. Pap. <laughs> like, I imagine all of that was like, most of what passes for legitimate entertainment, and then he gets to the end, it's just like, your time and attention on mindless, pap. <laughs> like, <laughs> I'm mindless, um, uh, <coughs> um, <coughs> mindless, uh, <coughs> paps. <laughs> pap. Mindless, and then, like, leaves and takes, like, a sip of water, just like, <sighs> pap. He's <laughs> 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 like, why do you do that? Why do you do that, Epictetus? But dude, I love that quote because um, I, I, it's so dangerous to me. We, we we always joke about it how you um, have tried to get me into lots of TV shows. Yeah, and I'll, I'll literally just walk out of the room. Like, and and I always feel weird doing it. Like, because it's not that usually when 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 I, I think of someone who's not into something, they're like, I fucking hate Bob's Burgers. That is stupid. You know what I mean? I, and that's not the way I feel at all. Yeah. It's just, I, we call it quicksand because it just sucks you in. Yeah. It's so addictive. It does. And yeah. Like, I'm almost done watching Doctor Who. <laughs> like, like six months later. <laughs> and so I, that's why I always think, like, I have to be careful, like, what goes into my head. Because mm. you only have so much mental energy. Yeah, yeah, Which yeah. is something that I always try to remember. Like, obviously, it's easy to feel how much physical energy you have. Yeah, yeah, You yeah, cannot yeah. lift a weight all day. You yeah. get too tired. And the same thing goes with your head. Yeah, yeah. So if you're watching this mindless stuff that's going in there and your brain is processing, even subconsciously, it's still going. And, like, that's where, pl- where seeds get planted gets planted by stuff that enters your brain and later comes out as I don't know you ever like watch a show so much you start speaking like a character yeah 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 like I'm sure like, we, we've all done that all the time at work um, I say cool 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 uh, and it's like one of the characters in community mm-hmm. and so you can do that without realizing it I mean I, I realize it I say it because <laughs> it is cool 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 but then if you get like <laughs> broken down and tired then all of a sudden all you, that's all you speak yeah. and it, it gets um it's not even such a bad thing, honestly. Like, uh, in of itself, like, yeah. speaking like a, uh, uh, the guy from Community, that's fine. Yeah. Whatever. That's also, like, the only thing I take from him. I don't, I don't think I speak like him at all, because he speaks very robotic and very, like, I don't know. He's just kind of made to not be human. Get me off topic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but, like, okay, so the important thing about that quote, like, the first thing I thought of was Reddit. Yeah. And... So my addiction. Yeah, and I spend so much time on there, and I'm like, it's it's such a source of wasted time yeah. for me. So I've been trying to like wean myself off of it, and it's hard. Uh, no, I've been doing pretty well because I spend most of my time on NFL and NBA, right? The the two sports I follow the most. Um, and so I just went on rants where I just insulted someone a bunch. And now I'm banned from both of those, and I weigh, I use way less time. I like spend <laughs> you got way, banned. Yeah, no, 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 I got banned from both of them. Like, yeah. So, right, That's like, helpful. right, like after the Thunder, like I'm a big Thunder fan, and after the Thunder lost to the Warriors, like Warriors fans were going in and saying like, "Wow, the Thunder fucking suck," right? And I was just like, "Fuck you," yeah, right? Like, the, just yeah, like <laughs> just like stupid stuff. And I was like, "Yes, yeah, are fucking idiots." Um, and so I got banned, and, like, like at first when I got banned, I was like, ah, man, can't post all this great content that is important. And, uh, and then, like, you know, I thought for, like, a second, as, like, everyone heard that and was like, that was stupid. Yeah. So that's what I thought. It's, yeah. like, so stupid. Like, nothing I, I post had importance, you know? Like, <laughs> in the like, grand scheme of things. Like, you should be doing No, not even in the little scheme things. of things. Like, like... <laughs> Everything I posted, like, none of it got big. I think the funniest thing that I did post, I did post one hilarious thing. I'm going to brag about it right now. Is <laughs> the Detroit Lions, or it's, they were playing the St. Louis Rams, and the Rams mailed, like, 
2,000 tickets to just some random guy, like on accident. Whoa. Yeah. And so he posted it on Reddit and was like, yo, what is this? What do I do? Like, what the hell's going on? This is cool. Like, people are going to enjoy looking at this. And then I went on and I said, wow. They literally can't even give away tickets to the game. Nice. I thought that was funny. I thought that was really funny. You didn't laugh, so like that that's 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 bad. <laughs> <laughs> no, I didn't laugh, but everyone listening did, so <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, it's great. That, that boost comp. Yeah. But I thought it was really funny. I mean, you couldn't give away tickets. Because the guy was like trying to give them back, right? Like he's trying to figure out how to give them back. Yeah. No, I can't laugh at anything you're saying because I'm not listening. Because, think about this quote. <laughs> <laughs> that's cool. That's cool. That's like, cool like giving up on mindless uh, entertainment, man. That's um, Everyone tries to talk me into Netflix as if it's like the greatest. Yeah, I don't like, understand. Like the that. greatest use of my time. Yeah. Not the greatest in terms of like, if you are going to watch something, it's a good way to do it. That's not the way it's presented. It's this is the best thing you could be doing with your life. Yeah, that's the way people talk about it. That's a lot of people like that is their life. Like they'll yeah. go to work, come home, watch Netflix. Like, and that's for what he hours. says. Like that's what he said in the book. I forget the exact quote because I just put down the book. But um, <laughs> it's that you can slip imperceptibly into that mindset. Yeah, yeah, yeah. because people enjoy it so much. But it, it, it's passive, right? It's taking a passive turn right, to the point that. Have you ever been with someone? I'm sure, oh, we've, we've been in this situation many times where we're talking, we're hanging out, we're joking, and then uh, we put on a TV show, and all of a sudden, I have things I want to say, but I have to stifle them, because it becomes rude to discuss something over the show. The show yeah. takes importance, it's louder, yeah. it just keeps going, it doesn't go, fuck, if I start talking, it's not going to stop for me, yeah. so I should stop for it. Yeah. It kind of has an effect, mm. and I don't know how to overcome it. I guess that's why sports are good, you can... You can talk, talk over them. Yeah. Unless you're watching fights with me, then don't say anything to me. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm going to keep doing that's it. Like, <laughs> I'm going to keep doing that. When, when I watch fights with people, I feel bad for them. Like, they're just trying to be nice. Like, hey, so how's it going, man? I'm like, dude, do you not see the fight? There's a <laughs> fight going on. Yeah. This fight has never happened. <laughs> 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 yeah. And it's funny, too, because, like, especially when people, like, don't know much about fighting, too, and they're just, like, oh. Looking for help from you because you know it, right? Like it's, like, it's a thing you spend a lot of time studying, and you understand like the history behind these things, right? Like the guys, the fighters, like you know when Dominic Cruz and Uriah Faber fought. Oof. There's a lot of history there, Oof, and so they can much. ask you about that, and they kind of feel comfortable coming to you looking for that knowledge. But yeah, like but while the fight's <laughs> happening, you're just like. It's too late. You should yeah. have done any research. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So what happened the first time? That, I don't know. It's on YouTube. <laughs> <laughs> the, the, the funniest, like the funniest, dumb question people ask is like about the sponsors on the ring. Oh uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Like, because um, the, the the I think that's the next step in the UFC is making the ring the ring look nice. Because right now it looks terrible, right? It's all it's but it won't. The it's money. Yeah, but um, there's better. There's other ways to make money. Yeah, but and they so, can do those other ways while still doing this, you know? Okay, but any, my point is it looks bad. <laughs> so, like, other other uh, companies have it with just a white mat, and it looks so sick. Yeah. And so my wor- my least favorite conversation is talking about the stickers on the mat. Yeah. I'm not going to, I don't know. Uh, like, so how much are they making for this fight? I, I don't know. <laughs> they don't even like release that data a lot of the time. They they release, like, the minimum that they mm. make, like, the contractual minimum uh, is out there. But uh, like the, the UFC, like there's no doubt in my mind that they pay way more than that. Yeah, you know, with, like, I've, heard, I've heard stories. Like Brendan Schaub told a story about um, he fought on the same card as Shane Carwin when Shane Carwin fought Brock Lesnar, mm-hmm. and so they both had. I don't know what, what Brendan Schaub's fight was that night because um, he he was always hit or miss. Mm-hmm. Like he had amazing fights and then he got destroyed. Yeah. So I don't know what night it was, but they're in the back, both of them crying, and then Brendan Schaub says Dana White walked in said good job to Shane Carwin, tossed him a check, and there are no more tears. Whatever amount that is. Yeah. You know what I mean? And so the amount of say, happiness. Yeah, like, like the <laughs> amount that like, makes you forget that he just lost, like, the this thing fight he that wanted he was the winning. most. Yeah, yeah like, like, for how, the title, probably. Yeah, like, what, like what, how much do you think you have to pay, like, Cam Newton, you know? Like, right after the Super Bowl. Like, right as the clock hits zero, like, what dollar amount like here's would it be? Seventeen million dollars. Like, uh, that's what he makes per right. year. Like, <laughs> you know. Uh, so that's not gonna change it for him. That's what's crazy about that. I mean, 
Like, granted, UFC fighters make a lot less. Yeah. But. But how much is Reebok? F- I don't know. I'm watching a fight. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I before was, the Reebok, I don't. I don't know. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, it's like the the Reebok deals and the stuff like that is always like so trivial. You know, yeah. like that's not the important part of what's happening. Like it, it's shitty for the fighters if they do get like less money, but. What's happening is this guy is kicking his face. Like, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like it's more pressing matters. We can talk about Reebok on Tuesday. Yeah. Right now it's Saturday. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right now we should talk about that flying knee. <laughs> mm-hmm. Knocked out Clay Guida. Oh, that was dude, just a knee. So that fight, uh, that was Brian Ortega versus Clay Guida last weekend at UFC 199. I was there. I was in attendance, and that fight was so one-sided, and the bathroom lines were so crazy. That I walked out. Whoa. I walked out. There was like a minute and a half left in the third round. <laughs> yeah. I was like, Clay Guida's got this. It's in the bag. Yeah. I'm going to be smart and leave. <laughs> <laughs> I'll leave like a smart guy. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to gamble that nothing's going to happen. And walk outside, everyone goes crazy. Brian yeah. Ortega. That's the third time he's done that, too. Yeah. Brian Ortega, like, dude's amazing. Like, He's been losing in the third round three times in a row, <laughs> and he's undefeated. He keeps pulling it out of his ass. It, it was on the... Um, my family went to Buffalo Wild Wings last night, and it was on the TVs. Brian Ortega? The Brian ortega Clay Guida fight. Huh. Yeah, and so I was, I was watching it, and I was like, ooh, I'll put my money on Clay Guida. I don't know why. Like, I know, I know. <laughs> right? The worst sandbagger gambler. <laughs> like, you bet on the guy you know is going to lose. <laughs> so Take I did your that. insider info. I was like, hey, guys, up. like, he's going to dominate the whole fight. <laughs> and <then> so, like, <laughs> he did, obviously, right? They were like, oh, this guy is just way better. And, like, it was funny listening to my family because, like, they, they don't know anything about fighting, right? Yeah. They're like, this other guy doesn't even know what he's doing like Brian Ortega I was like he's probably never practiced <laughs> that guy knows nothing yeah. about martial arts yeah they were like oh yeah he, he doesn't even seem like he has a game plan and I'm like where is this coming from like, yeah. <laughs> like none of you have watched like a fight other than a Pacquiao fight you know and even then like they don't know what's happening they just cheer for him because he's Filipino which is fine you know like Fair there's enough. nothing wrong in that like cheer for a guy because of nationality right yeah it's really it's common yeah it's fine like it, it kind of gives you a sense of like you know I made it with him. You know, he represents the same thing I do, you know? Mm-hmm. So, yeah. It was funny. It was just, like, this guy's not, not even good. Yeah, you, know, like, you know the question I always get about fighting? That, like, I haven't found a good way to explain it, but people always ask me who I root for. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And I try to like, explain that. I don't root for any. Like, I don't really, like, the outcome isn't the most important part of the fight. Uh, it's what happens between, right? It's from bell to bell. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I live for, right? That's what I want to see. But you can also respond by saying Max Holloway. So. <laughs> Always cheer for Max Holloway. <laughs> I don't cheer for any fighter. I'm above it. I'm enlightened. Except when it comes to Max Holloway. <laughs> it's so great. Do you know? <laughs> you know? He's Hawaiian. <laughs> I did. Yeah, see, like, that's, like, it's the nationality thing again. Like, yeah. I, I was born in Hawaii. Tony was... Ferguson used to train in Costa Mesa. Um, he might win his next fight. I don't really know. <laughs> as long as he doesn't fight Khabib, I think he'll win. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah. Was... But um, it, it's just a hard thing to explain to people, like, if, who, Cause... especially people who casually watch. Like, yeah. the only exciting part is the hand raising. Oh, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I was so trying then, to I was trying to come up with like, an analogy because it's hard. a lot of people when they first start watching they the the phrase they use is I only watch for the knockouts. Yeah, that wait, wait, which, which makes I, it, it's, it, it's the most exciting part. And it, I feel like it stems a lot from boxing, right? Like the most important part of boxing is a knockout. Yeah, right. And so it's just a casual fan thing. And the uh, this isn't like a great analogy, but I always thought it's kind of like um, you know guys who only talk to girls for sex. Oh uh, yeah, like. If this fight was not a knockout, it was a waste of my life. Oh, uh, yeah, yeah, Like, yeah. if I'm talking to a girl and we don't fuck, what was the point? Like, dude, yeah. there's so many points. I don't <laughs> know. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. was she nice? Did she make you laugh? Like, yeah. there's so many things. You was can, she you can a human? Your jokes. Like, <laughs> it, 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 there's so many, there's an infinite amount of ways that for it to be entertaining. Yeah. Right? Like, just because a fight goes to a decision doesn't make it a bad fight. Yeah, I always hated it that. Might, like, <laughs> but like same with someone like, could get some knocked out. It could, terrible. yeah. Like, like some like TKOs are just like sad to watch. Yeah. Like I saw one on on Friday night. I went to these um, 
they were professionals, but like new professionals. Ah, uh, okay. You know what I mean? So like it was so a it's professional like a event, but like yeah, it kind of looked like that. And so some of those knockouts were like sad. Really? Like one like, guy was just dominating. Yeah, one guy takes a punch and then he stumbles away just enough so it doesn't stop. Yeah. Like Big John McCarthy was the referee. Oh. So it was cool. to that level, but like the fighters weren't like that sick. Huh. They're, they're saying like the the way you could tell is because when the bell rings, they just run at each other. Yeah. Whereas the, any professional, like, like Anderson Silva doesn't throw a punch for a minute. Yeah. <laughs> he doesn't do anything. Yeah. He's got to chill. He's going to see what you got. But the, when you first start fighting, which I, I, I get, like, in my jiu-jitsu competitions, I always pull guard in the first seven seconds. Yeah. Like, I, I, try I, to. I'm scared. Like, I, <laughs> and it's all out of fear. Yeah. Which makes sense for these guys, which I guess is, like, what... Like, the reason that you become a, a seasoned veteran is just that you get better at dealing with the fear. Yeah. Because from all, all that I've heard, the fear doesn't go away. You don't it's become just, unscared. Yeah. I mean, going to war with another human. Like, yeah. <laughs> he's like, sitting H there trying to kill you. How can you not be afraid of that? Like, Hicks and Gracie talks about that in Choke. Choke, a documentary I recommend everyone watches. It's free on YouTube. Choke. Mm -hmm. Um... He says, like, uh, uh, the man who is not scared is not intelligent. I'm scared of everything. Yeah. Always scared. Yeah. Scared to death. Yeah. And then he explains it really well. I don't forget the rest of what he says. But then another example, uh, Cowboy Cerrone said I'm Alec when they lock him in the cage. And the ref looks at him and goes, are you ready? He's like, no, man, I'm not fucking What do you mean am I ready? I'm not <laughs> ready for this. I can't be ready. Jesus Christ, man. So I'm like, no, I'm not ready. <laughs> <laughs> they start to fight anyway? Yeah, well, yeah. It, that's I what mean, he's thinking. He, he uh, nods his head. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, like, that's his I thought he said that reaction. out loud. Just no. <laughs> just, no! And he's like, all right, do we wait? Like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what would you do as a rep? You're just like, ah. You're not, you're not ready? Um, do we wait? Let's go to right, commercial. You, you lost. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, yeah it, no one says they're not ready. Yeah, yeah. But like, but they're internally, scared. Yeah, they're scared, which, which is a good thing. Which I felt um, more so in in stand up comedy as well. Yeah, like I used to do a lot of stand up in Taipei, and I remember like distinctly one time um, because th there's a lineup, but there's not like set times. Yeah. So I know I'm going after this guy. I have no idea long how how long. He's going on, and there's a lot of adrenaline and stuff involved, which is a time distortant. So, like, I don't know how long he's been up. I don't know how long he's going to be on. Yeah, and it seems how, like forever, how right? Time works. No matter, no matter how long he's on, he could be up there for a minute. It would feel like thirty to you. Yeah, and so I was standing in the back, looking at the door, and I remember so clearly. I had the thought. It was such like a vivid like. It seemed so rational at the time. Like mm -hmm. I could run away, and no one would mind, right? <laughs> they would understand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just because, like, the intense fear of, I don't know. I don't know what I'm even afraid of at that point. Like, going up and people not liking me, I, I think, um, I don't know. I feel like for something like stand-up comedy, maybe it's, like, a, a source of judgment, right? Because, like, most of your life you want people to like you, right? I try yeah, see, so it's just like you grew up and you're like, I want to make a lot of friends, right? Like you get to high school, you don't want to be like a weird kid, right? Like that, Yeah, see, like that, <laughs> that went through everyone's eyes. Like, I don't want to be like a weird kid. Like, I want to be cool, you know? I want to have a bunch of friends. So, like, if you get up there and everyone's like, y what? Like, I don't know. you just standing up there as a source of ridicule is not what anyone wants to be. And, and I standing think standing up there telling roofie jokes and no one laughs at. <laughs> that a couple times. <laughs> but yeah, that's just like a, a thing no human wants to be doing, yeah. you know? And I, I, I guess read, I, I read it, something cool about it where it's like um, it's such an unnatural situation because like obviously humans evolved in Africa, like standing on the, the prairie mm -hmm. uh, in bands, like shoulder to shoulder or like in a circle, mm -hmm. something like that, like working together. <laughs> so the situation of one guy standing on a raised thing looking out at like 30 people looking at him yeah means that he's about to die oh like there's an animal behind him or like there, there's some or weird, they're or killing him or he's ostracized <laughs> yeah yeah, yeah exactly. like, <laughs> they're about to stone him <laughs> yeah they're, they're putting him to death they're trying to get him out of the community which is essentially death yeah like if you're by yourself out in the savannah like you're dead realistically you're not gonna do well yeah um and so we, we that that's ingrained in our excuse me ingrained in our DNA somehow. 
subconsciously and it's like Cause you if want I go up there and they don't like me I'm fucking kicked out of the savannah <laughs> can't join the tribe yeah actually in a recent episode of Doctor Who they were talking about that too and they were just like there was something uh, like a little boy they were talking about this dream that everyone has right so you're you're in a dream but you're you're still in your own room right you're exactly where you're sleeping and you try and get up so you shift over, you put your feet on the ground, but you can't stand, right? And then someone from under the bed grabs you. They grab your ankle, right? And then you wake up. And they're saying a lot of people have had that dream. Like, I've actually had that dream, which is why it was really trippy. I thought it was a really good episode. Uh, so yeah, they were talking about that. And then, so they went under the bed to look. They came back up and like there was something on the bed under a sheet. Right? So you couldn't tell what it was. The doctor comes in and he's like, look away. It just wants to be seen, so you have to look away. Right? So they're looking out the window and he's like, are you afraid? And the kid's like, yes. It's like, Good. It's like, you should be afraid a lot in life. Like, you should be. It means you're doing something right. You know? Fear helps you. You need to use the fear. Right? It'll help you jump. Yeah, jump higher, run faster, think better. Fear mm -hmm. means you're about to grow. Yeah. Yeah. Which is a good thing. So, go be afraid of shit. Yeah. Hey. <laughs> it's a good message to end this on. Mm. Go do something that scares you. All right. Mm -hmm. I guess we should we should wrap this full circle. What's something that I can do that scares me? I can, um, because, so, let's try to tie this all together. We had a lot of loose ends this podcast. Oh, yeah, definitely. So, I don't have any control in my life, but I can look from the outside and make suggestions. I suggest to myself that I should go do something scary because that means growth. And the thing that I keep doing, um, my habit has been to go to the UCI Center and watch movies. That's my favorite movie theater. Mm. I just go, I look up what's playing and I go see something. And when I'm there, there's all these beautiful college girls. But my habit is to get very high before I go, <laughs> which makes it hard to just like formulate words and like go up and have the balls to talk to them. I get scared. Mm -hmm. So I always chicken out. So I think for my own growth, I need to at least try. Just go up to some random girls and say anything. Yeah. Just go do it. Yeah. And like fighting, it doesn't matter about the outcome. Right? I don't need to like set up like, if I don't marry this woman. <laughs> <laughs> it's like it a goddamn decision. Oh, wait. <laughs> no, the point is to entertain myself in the meantime yeah. while growing. If you can entertain yourself while growing, that's the greatest. Yeah. That's what everyone That's best case scenario. Should want. Yeah, so what's something you can do that's scary? The thing I've been like... Okay, I've been trying to do this recently, and I keep putting it off, and I think a lot of it is because of fear, is painting something. Oh, yeah. Right? Like, make, I want to I wanna do, like, stencils or something, but, like, I keep having this, like, this stupid fear in my head that it's going to just be bad. Yeah. And then I'm like, why? Like, what does it matter? Like, this is, like, going to be the, one of the first times I've painted something in 10, 15 years, Yeah, right? it's not going to be good. Yeah. <laughs> and I need to do that and then try painting another thing that'll be better, right? Yeah. So I need to do that, like, soon. That's been, like, on my list of things to do is, like, go get paint and, like actually start doing this. I like it. Anyone so. listening out there, I nope. recommend highly Ooh, that and you guitar. do something scary. Art. Do Just art. Do something sort. artful, something that's <laughs> scary, something that something that pushes you. Yeah. Because you really will grow out of it, I guarantee it. Or you'll die and that's fine too. Um, <laughs> Is right, it? On that night. <laughs> <laughs> Don't be scared to death. Goodbye. <laughs>